Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is Dr. Paz, and we are at my homepage in, um, in another weekly lecture uh, for Principles of Financial Accounting. So if we click on Courses and we see Principles of Financial Accounting, we will move on to Financial Statements this week. So let's click Access Lesson, and then you will see a full lesson here on the financial statements and some practice problems as well and some solutions with additional practice quizzes. But we will go over our financial statements. I'm going to click this icon right up here to uh, show to advance it in a new screen. So this icon right here will bring us up in a new screen so we can see it a little bit bigger. So let's do that and get started with our financial statements. So for principles of accounting. So here we see each of the financial statements. So we have the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. So what we have is we have that the double entry process of recording business transactions involves us recording the transactions in the general ledger and in um, proper ledger accounts. And you will see on my YouTube channel a general ledger video as well. And I'll show you that at the end here. Actually, let's go to that so I don't forget. So if we come to my YouTube channel here, and if you just click on all videos at the top here, and then, or you can just click the search button here. And if you just type in general ledger, then you will see the first video here about general ledgers. And then here I have some um, accounting cycles and other items as well, but this is the video that you want right here. All right, so let's go back to our double entry accounting, right? So this is the process in which um, you have a double entry account. And so here what we have is T accounts, right? And so the ending balance of the accounts and the T accounts are what we have as an unadjusted trial balance. So the accounting process continues with the recording of adjusting entries at the end of each accounting period. And so I will also stop right here to show you if you also click on my videos here, and we click here. There is also, I have another video on the accounting process. And you can just type that here. And here you'll see uh, I have accounting normal balances. And then there is an accounting process video that I thought I posted. Let's go back to videos here. And if we go to all videos, I did see it. And I tried to post it in our class earlier. So here it is, the accounting process. So if you click on that video, that will take you there. And also this accounting normal balance video and this double entry um, accounting video will be helpful for you. So these are all different videos that will help. Um, so again, if you just come to videos and you scroll down or you can um, click on this little magnifying glass and we'll get you TV, those videos as well that will help you. But back to our uh, lesson here. So here we were talking about the unadjusted trial balance. And then, so the accounting process continues. And when once we record adjusting entries at the end of the accounting period, then that process gives us the journal entries and the general journals. And then we post it to the ledger accounts or to our T accounts. And then we make sure that revenues and expenses are recorded in um, the correct accounting period. And then the ending balances in these ledger accounts or in our T accounts, after we perform the adjusting entries, then we get an adjusted trial balance. And then now we are at the end of the accounting period and then we can prepare our financial statement. So this is usually done uh, monthly. And again, we have here our income statement, our statement of retained earnings, our balance sheet, and our statement of cash flows as well. And then if we're at the end of our fiscal year, then we would prepare the beginning of the new year by closing all of our revenue, our expense, and our dividend account. So that's only done at the end of the year. So at the end of your fiscal year or your calendar year, fiscal year meaning that you don't close, you know, you don't use January through December, you might use July through June. Okay, then you would um, close the balances of your revenue, expenses, and dividends accounts, and those go into retained earnings. And then the balance in those accounts are then set to zero for the new year. And then at when it, hopefully you have a net income and that is transferred to your retained earnings account. So now let's talk about each of the financial statements. Um, so those are reports that are based on your recorded 
um, and summarized transactions, right? And they're used basically for decision making and to determine the performance um, and financial condition of a business. So we have our income statement, which shows us revenues and expenses uh, during a stated time period. And then this is also known as the statement of earnings, or it could be known as the profitability statement as well. Then we have the statement of retained earnings or the statement of owner's equity. And this is basically your accumulation of profits that have been retained or reinvested in the company. Then we move on to the balance sheet. And the balance sheet is a document that shows the financial position of a company at one moment in time. And it's basically the accounting equation. And we'll have a lesson on that as well. Assets, liabilities, and owner's equity. Or in the accounting equation, you'll note it's assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity or allo. And then we have the statement of cash flows. And what that is, is a document that shows the sources or inflows of the cash receipts, cash coming in, or the uses or outflow of the cash payments that were made during a stated period. And we'll talk about um, the statement of cash flow and the solvency of the company later on. So those are the overview of our financial statements. Now let's take a look at each one individually with their respective equations. So here we have an income statement and that measures the performance of a business where we're summarizing the revenues and expenses for a given period. And so then here you see the equation is either your net income or net loss is your revenues minus your expenses. So hopefully your revenues exceed your expense and then you have a net income or profit. But if your expenses are greater then you're going to have a net loss as you can see here. So it's important to know um, when revenue is generated and expenses are incurred so that you have a proper income and that is determined for any given accounting period. So make sure you understand the definitions of revenue and expenses. So basically we have revenue is the amount that is earned from goods and services rendered in a given period of time. So to generate revenue, you either have goods that you need to sell or services or both. And if none of this occurs then you have no revenue. Now for expenses, this refers to the cost of goods and services used in the process of generating that revenue in a given time period. So you would incur revenue, um, either goods or services or both that need to be used up. So an expense is a use of an asset like cash equipment or supplies. All right, so now let's look at an example, right? And so we have assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And so this is again for accurate auditors. And you see that we have cash of 19,000, we have liabilities here of 50, and then we have total equity. And keep in mind, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. And then the income statement that we have is basically the fees earned. So this is the revenue account. So we have 2,500 here, and then the expenses generated um, or incurred when we're trying to generate those fees. So we have a net income of $2,300. And then the net income will carry forward to the statement of retained earnings. Now we have a multiple step income statement. And what a multiple step income statement does, it basically has several sections. So think of a merchandiser like Walmart, right? So you're gonna have net sales. And then this is your sales returns and allowances and discounts subtracted from your gross sales. You're going to have costs of goods sold or COGS, and that's the amount that you paid for the merchandise that you sold during that period. So sales minus your cost of goods sold is going to give you your gross profit. And then you have your selling expenses, which could be marketing and selling of the product. And then you have your administrative expenses that there's not really related to marketing or sales, but your still expenses that you incurred. Then we result in the operating income, which measures the results of the entity's major ongoing activity. So it's basically your gross profit minus your operating expenses. And then you can have other miscellaneous revenues and expenses that are kind of go outside of your normal day-to-day -day operations. And that can be gains or losses on the sale of assets or interest expense or interest revenues. So here you see an example of our multi-step income statement. And as you can see here, we start with gross sales. We subtract sales returns and allowances and sales discount to get our net sales. We subtract our cost of goods sold to get our gross profit. Then we list all of our operating expenses. And then we have our total selling expenses. And then we scroll down to see our administrative expenses as well. 
And so then you'll see all of those as we scroll down. And so you see your total administrative expenses here. And then your total operating expenses. And so then your operating income. And then here you have your other revenues and expenses. And then you have your income before taxes, your income taxes, and then your final net income. So that is your multi-step income statement. And so then we have our statement of retained earnings. So in a statement of retained earnings, it shows the summary changes of your profits that are reinvested in the business instead of distributing them to the owners as a dividend for a given time period. And then here is our equation for um, that beginning retained earnings. And I also want to show you in a form of a T account. So if we think of our retained earnings in the form of a T account, we have our beginning balance. Oops, let's go. It's a credit balance. So let me erase that. So we have our, be oops, let's go back to that. So we have our beginning balance plus our net income. All right, and then minus our dividends equals our ending balance. And so that is in the form. So exactly this equation here, if you had a net loss, that would be subtracted. So your net loss would be a debit balance here. And then basically what this is telling you is everything that you see at the, you know, from the, the inception of the company, all of the retained earnings that they have. And so, and here we see an example. So we have our beginning retained earnings. And if you see here, the beginning retained earnings is zero. So that means that this company was just started because this amount would have either a loss or um, a, a credit balance in revenue that we earned. So if, since it's zero, we know that if we just had started it. So that's a nice, easy giveaway there. And then when we complete the income statement, we see here our expanded, um, uh, basically statement of retained earnings, right? So here is our allo here, as we had it before, right? Assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. And then we have our owner's equity that's divided into capital stock and retained earnings. And then our retained earnings formula is your prior year retained earnings plus your revenues minus expenses, which is your net income. So that would be here as your net income and then subtract your dividends. So that is your expanded formula for your statement of retained earnings. Now let's move on to the balance sheet. So in our balance sheet, we measure the financial strength of businesses at a particular date by comparing our assets, our liabilities, and our stockholders' equity. So essentially, the balance sheet is our basic accounting equation, or ALO. And the balance sheet is a snapshot of the company's financial position, and it is only accurate for the moment of time because it reflects what the company currently owns in terms of asset and <clears throat> owes in terms of liabilities, as well as the claims of the owners, which is our owner's equity or stockholder's equity. So as soon as the company completes a transaction, the balance sheet will change to reflect that. So the balance sheet illustrates like the different components of the accounting equation, and it's typically completed after the income statement and the statement of retained earnings, right? Because you need that retained earnings, that ending balance to include in your equity section in your balance sheet. And then we have an example here. So we show you again. Um, so here's just our balance sheet and all of the accounts are listed up here. And then basically you see your assets, your liabilities and your owner's equity. But the key to note here is that they always have to equal. So your total assets of 22,150 equal your total liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay, and then here is our assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity, our allo equation for our balance sheet. Fantastic. So now moving on to our statement of cash flows. So here um, we have financial statements that demonstrate the receipt and use of cash during a period. So here we have a bunch of information that we're giving you all of the account balances. And then if you click here, you'll reveal the solution to your statement of cash flows. 
And then there's another way in which to classify your balance sheet. So here your balance sheet is either unclassified or classified. And if we have a classified balance sheet, we basically break them up into current and long-term assets. So your current assets are usually converted into cash um, or sold within the next 12 months. So within that year. So cash, accounts receivable, AR, supplies, prepaid rent, and prepaid insurance are all current assets. And then intangible assets, uh, they don't have a physical presence, right? So that's patents, trademarks, and copyrights. Then we have plant assets, which are property, plant, and equipment, or PPE. And those could be automobiles or vehicles, equipment, machinery, building, and land. And then so we have current assets, then we have to have long-term assets. And long-term assets have a benefit of more than one accounting period. So that asset must be used in the normal operation of a business to fit into this category. But if one of the assets uh, listed above is not used in the normal operating um, operations, then it would be considered a long-term investment. So that's our separation of current and long-term assets. And if we separate the assets, we have to separate the liabilities similarly. So our current liabilities would be within the next 12 months. And then our long-term liabilities would be greater than 12 months. And then your stockholder's equity is still the same, right? You have your common stock and your retained earnings. And then as you see here, we have an example of a classified um, balance sheet. And you see the reason, the difference here is that we have current assets and current liabilities. So if you separate, you can't classify one and not the other. You have to classify your current assets and then you still have your total assets and then your current liabilities and you still have your total liabilities and stockholders equity. And as you can see here, they still balance as it always will be. Awesome. So I hope this clarifies the financial statements. Thanks for watching.